All right, once again, welcome to our DIY gift class today for the holidays. Great to have you along. And we are going to dive right in as we are going to be showcasing four different gift ideas today. I saw somebody said in chat they made, was it 55 gifts last year? That is really awesome and very impressive. So let's start with the first one here. Um, over here, I have displayed how you could potentially bring a beer bread to, um, to life in a gift basket. So let me turn off my video here so that way you guys can see uh, primarily just what we have going on over here. All right. So I'll move this a little bit more so you guys can, can see this. But this is the idea of making a garlic ranch beer bread, okay, which we'll review the recipe in a moment. Um, thanks for the nail comment. I love them too. Um, so this is a garlic ranch beer bread that, like I said, we'll go over the recipe. And all you need to make this beer bread after you um, compile these ingredients into the jar is your favorite beer. Okay, so I thought it'd be fun. You could give this to somebody in a nice gift basket along with perhaps, you know, one of our local holiday beers that we have this time of year or whatever their favorite beer may be, okay? Tuck that in there. This is going to be made in a loaf pan. So you could even, you know, tuck like an actual loaf pan into the side. So they really have everything ready to go um, to make this beer bread. So like I said, I want to show you how some of these things come to life. So we're going to do that right now with the beer bread. Let me move some stuff out of the way. All right. And we'll bring these back along with our pan. Okay. Let's go over the actual recipe. Okay. So let me share my screen for you guys and pull that up. Okay. Here it is on our savory site, Garlic Ranch Beer Bread Jars. So as you probably saw in my video, no, yeah, in my screenshot over here, I did use what they recommend of a wide mouth jar. And then to make this some very simple ingredients, this recipe is going to make four jars. So we need some self-rising flour, which after I'm done sharing my screen, I will show you what our package of self-rising flour looks like in the stores. But so some flour, um, a little bit of sugar, some ranch seasoning mix, which we do have our own Nature's Promise ranch seasoning mix. It's usually on the top shelf um, in the condiment section. So check for that. And then just simply some garlic powder and salt. You divide all of those ingredients by four jars. And um, then we go ahead and all we have to do is make it. So it shows you the steps of how to make the jars and then what you can put on the uh, the tag, okay? Um, so showing this again, that's what I did. I have the title here, Garlic Ranch Beer Bread. Add your favorite beer, pour in a loaf pan bake at 350 for 45 to 50 minutes. Just did a nice little festive ribbon on there. You're good to go. So let's make this, guys. It won't be done in time, obviously, by the time we're done with pass, but I will show you pictures. But this is what it looks like inside. I can smell the ranch in there, all of that goodness. All right, so let's put that into our bowl, okay? And then um, just adding your favorite beer, which I mentioned using potentially like one of our local holiday beers this time of year, you could pop in there. Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was looking at this and I was like, I don't know how to, how to open this. I'm going to use that beer today for this one. We're just going to um use a different beer here okay 
So the benefit to putting beer into beer bread like this is that um, it reacts to the flour and the ingredients in here, the yeast of the beer does. Um, so the yeast of the beer activates with the flour and other ingredients, and then it helps um, the beer, not excuse me, the bread rise. Okay, so that's why we want to use beer in something like this compared to it's not necessarily the carbonation, like, so we couldn't necessarily use like a, a soda or a seltzer in here. We need the actual yeast um, from the beer. Uh, I see the question, should the beer be room temperature? I didn't see in any type of indication of that in the recipe. Um, my beer, it kind of sits out. This one was sitting on the back porch. So um, it was kind of chilled, but not like refrigerated chilled. Um, you can smell it though in there. All right, let's spray our pan here. I love to use for baking our baking spray. Okay. Love to see you guys chatting it up and chat there. I'll look back there in a minute to see what all you guys are, are saying. But I'm about out of this spray, clearly. <laughs> all right, so we got some in there. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so, put it in. All right. Then I will smooth this out. Go. Oh, just a moment. I see your question there about the making your own self-rising. Just a moment. I'm going to show you our self-rising flower here. Okay, it's looking good. And then the recipe suggests that you um, do about two tablespoons of melted butter on the top of this and pop it into the oven, okay? Um, so let me show you guys our self-rising flour that we have in store here. It's gold metal self-rising and Looking at the ingredients here, what makes this a self-rising flour is the addition of things like baking soda, okay? The baking soda um, is that leavening agent that's going to help mix with the yeast of the beer to then um, rise, okay? So that's what we're looking for there. Okay, so that is... Gift number one. Now, gift number two, I am going to start boiling. Um, I'm gonna start boiling, turn this on here, three cups of water for the next gift that I've made, okay? So, let me pull that over here. And the next one that we have here, is an Italian tortellini soup, okay? I've made this now for a couple of years. I think it's a lovely gift. Um, so let me pull up that recipe for you guys now. Just a moment here. And we will review that right here. Okay, once again, one hour savory site, this Italian tortellini soup in the jar. and You'll see that this does get a guiding star, so it has some better for you ingredients for it. We start at the bottom with some sun-dried tomatoes um, and then some vegetable soup mix, as well as two low-sodium vegetable bouillon cubes, some Italian seasoning, parsley, and then the shelf-stable cheese tortellini, which you can find in our pasta aisle. Um, that's where that's going to be located. So it's dried tortellini pasta. Um, and this is going to make two jars. Okay. See some questions in chat. Um, okay. So some, maybe some IT situation there um, with the picture. Um, I see some more questions about how to be making your own self 
uh, rising flower. I can send out some um, tips and tricks for that um, and recipes. Somebody just mentioned in chat. I can send out some recipes to do that in my follow-up email, okay? Um, but once again, you can pick it up in our stores. And honestly, with the uh, if you're going to make four of the jars as the recommend, um, as the uh, recipe recommends, then one bag of it will probably, you know, take up your four jars if you wanted to make all four of them. Okay, so my water is starting to boil here for that, but I will stop sharing my screen again. And once again, looking at these ingredients here in our um, in our jars, so we have our tortellini, the sun-dried tomatoes, and then the seasonings and the bouillon there at the bottom, okay? So we're going to be pouring this in here after my water comes to a boil. Um, if you're curious about the uh, vegetable soup mix, this is what that is going to be looking like here that you can pick up. So right next to like the onion soup mix dips and whatnot. Um, so once it gets boiling, we'll pop that on there. In the meantime, I am going to show you guys another one. Okay, so next up here, we have gingerbread granola. Okay. And I actually made this gingerbread granola on, if you are local to the area, on Fox 43 at the beginning of, um, well, actually, the very end of November, beginning of December. So I'm going to show you guys that video so you can see how this gingerbread granola comes to life, okay? So just give me a moment here. And let me pull that up. Okay, just a moment. I need to see. What's the recipe? Here we go. Okay. So I will make this bigger for you guys. Peds.com. And let me know if for some reason you can't hear the sound. So if you're still trying to find that gift for the person in your life that is so hard to shop for, making your own gift can be affordable and can also be healthy too. Yeah, this is for my mom. If you're watching, this is what you're gonna get. <laughs> but listen, we are in the Fox 43 Morning Kitchen with dietitian Shayna Schultz from Giant on how you can really incorporate these gifts this year. Yes, I think that making homemade gifts this time of year just adds a nice extra special touch. And the gingerbread granola that we're making today has those nutritious ingredients that we can feel good about giving others. Awesome. So can you tell us, what are you showing us today? Yes. So the gingerbread granola, we're going to start with the base of some oats. Jackie, if I can have you just spread yes. these out on the sheet pan. Um, and while she's doing that, Sayera, I'm going to have you work on chopping up our pecans. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, now, once you have those all on the sheet pan there we're just going to pop them in the oven the oven is at 350 and we're going to do that for about 15 minutes and um, this just can be a really rough trap okay. really rustic in our granola. <laughs> no, no you just get in there and just a rough chop for our granola all right so now while that bakes we'll start with our other ingredients mm -hmm. here so the oats that we started with heart healthy ingredient we're going to continue on with some more in my bowl here i have a cup of wheat germ so both the oats and the wheat germ are going to give this granola a lot of fiber mm, okay nice. if you're not familiar with wheat germ this is also one that you can use as like like breadcrumbs and meatballs or meatloaf. Okay, so we have that there. And then Jackie here, another heart healthy ingredient. We have a third of a cup of canola oil that you can put in there. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna go on with some nuts. We have a cup and a half of sliced almonds there, as well as just one egg white. Okay, and now we need to sweeten it up a bit and some spices. So over here, we're gonna add in two thirds of a cup of molasses. Look at that. Mm. Yes, now molasses, <laughs> yes, so molasses is simply just sugar. It's actually the byproduct of when you crystallize sugar. This is the juice. And it's an iconic um, ingredient in both gingerbread and shoe fly pie. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna go in there. You can start giving this a mix. Ooh, this smells 
It's I know. so I sweet. Know. Yes. 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 Her bread. So, and then to spice it up, as I said, we're going to add some more ingredients here. I have uh, two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice, which you might be like, pumpkin gingerbread? Mm -hmm. But pumpkin pie spice doesn't really have anything to do with pumpkin. Pu exactly. Right? That's, I've said it all the time. It's, it's the spice spices. you put in yeah. the pumpkin yes. pie. Pumpkin pie spice is cinnamon, allspice, mm. clove, nutmeg, and ginger. So that's in there. A little more ginger to make it sing. That's about a teaspoon and a half. A quarter of a teaspoon of cloves. And then just a pinch of salt to marry it together. Okay, how are we doing with our pecans? Yeah, I think I think this is good. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're good here. Okay, so we'll put our pecans in. We do about a cup. And then those oats that we toasted here, we'll go ahead and pour those in as well. Might make a little bit of a mess. There, there you go. go. Okay. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> yes. And when you toast oats. Now it looks like my kitchen. <laughs> yes. It really, it brings out that so nice So you mix nice it all together? Smell. Mix it all together. Mm -hmm. Oops, we're going to bring this back And then actually. you're going to put it back on the pan? Back on mm -hmm. this pan here. And then after you do that, that's going to go back in the oven at 350 for about 10 to 15 minutes. Right. Okay, so and whenever you're ready. And then are you all ready, done after that? Spread that in there. When you're all done after that, this is what it is going to end up looking Look like. Look at nice. that. You can crack that up. You mm -hmm. can wrap yes. it in some nice wrapping to give so, to some. Yep, it just comes right apart. Love that. What I would recommend over here, I've already put it in a jar. If you do it in a jar, then this keeps for about three weeks. Nice. Perfect. And that should get us, if you wait a week to do this, that will get you right in time for Christmas. Absolutely. Or maybe yes. a gift for a teacher or something like that. Yes. Shana, thanks so much. Yes, Great information. I love this. This is something so fun you can do. You can bring the kiddos in as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, guys. So um, that was the gingerbread granola. Um, I'm glad that most of you were able to uh, view that with sound. If not, um, I can send the link out to that as well in the follow-up email. Um, I'm glad that you enjoyed that. I appreciate I appreciate that. Um, so as that was going on, I was able to um, start our tortellini soup right here. Um, and it's already smelling good. And this needs to boil then for about 10 to 3, 10 to 3, 10 to 13 minutes, okay, is what that is doing there. Now, just to review, um, so I know we're jumping all around so many places here, but just to review some of those ingredients from the gingerbread granola specifically, um, the big one I wanted to highlight here um was that wheat germ. So as I mentioned in the video, wheat germ is very similar to the same types of proteins and fibers that you're going to uh, get from whole grain oats, okay? So this is something, once again, as I mentioned in the video, but just to kind of emphasize a bit, is that, um, what's I'm gonna call it? What am I trying to say here? Is that, you know, if you get this whole jar, this is the jar of wheat germ that we sell in the store, and you're only using so much of it for that granola, use the rest of this in something like, um, yes, it is in the oatmeal aisle. Use the rest of it as like breadcrumbs. So if you're making meatloaf, which I did last night, if you're making meatballs, something like that, use the wheat germ in there as a way to use that up. Also, we talked about um, molasses in that video. And as I mentioned, um, molasses is just a byproduct of sugar, okay? Whenever sugar is extracted from sugar cane or sugar beet, it is kind of dehydrated in a way that it crystallizes into what we know as white table sugar. But when it does that, there's leftover juice. Molasses is that leftover juice, okay? Um, and then molasses is what is added um, to like brown sugar to make it brown sugar. So go with something like this. We don't want the backstrap molasses. 
because backstrap molasses is that juice that's extracted from the sugar. Like regular molasses is that juice boiled once. Backstrap is boiled twice. And when it's boiled twice, it gets really, really bitter. So that's why when we're baking, like making gingerbread cookies, making shoot by pie, anything like that, we don't want to use the backstrap because then it's going to get really bitter. Okay. Um, so just something to keep in mind there. I had to put add a little bit of water to my jar to get the rest of my uh, spices out here because some of them were kind of stuck there to the bottom. I didn't, so I just added a little bit more water here to get them out from the bottom of the jar. But once again, is there a substitute for molasses? Um, so that's a hard one because molasses is a very distinct flavor and it really is the iconic flavor in gingerbread. So you could, to make this granola, you could use something like maple syrup, like pure maple syrup if you wanted to instead, or maybe even honey. But to be honest, it's not going to give you that full on gingerbread feel like the molasses would. The ginger compare the ginger um, combined with that molasses is what gives it that um, that take. Okay, but this is what it looks like then in the jar. Um, this lasts for about three weeks in the jar. Okay, I made this for that TV segment, so that was almost three weeks ago. Okay. Um, is there a substitute, a gluten-free substitute for the wheat germ? Um, I would say you could just, I would just say using more oats. I mean, to be honest, the wheat germ is added to that recipe to give it some more like nutrition qualities. You wouldn't necessarily even had, have to add it at all. It's not like it's really like, it's okay if you don't have this in here. You could add more oats if you wanted to, like take oats and grind them down to like a flour consistency. Or I just saw somebody say in chat, you could use flax meal instead if you wanted to continue with that, that boosting of a nutrition quality as well. Okay, so I'm gonna take this up a notch here so it keeps boiling. Now guys, for the very last one, um, I'm just going to show it here for you guys. Um, grape nuts could work. Grape nuts would give you a little bit more crunch. Okay. So last one to show you guys are these dip ornaments. Okay. So this is a plastic ornament. I picked these up um, at Michael's. And um, so they're just a clear plastic ornament that then I have added our dip mix to. So let me show you guys the ingredients for the dip mix. Just a moment here. Let me find it. Here they are. So, whoops. What is happening? Hold on. Stop share. I don't know what's going on there. Just a moment. This was like coming up with some. Oh, it was like something coming up on Fox afterwards. Here we go. Now let me share. The gingerbread granola is on Savory. Yes, I will include that link. Okay. So here is the dip mix ornaments. And I did see all of these different shape ornaments at Michael's. So the actual ball, the one that I made was like a flat one. Um, but here in the ingredients, a lot of them may be ones that you already have in your cabinet. So everything from Italian seasoning, dried parsley, nutritional yeast, which I'll show you the package for in a moment, onion powder, garlic powder, crushed red pepper, if you want a little kick to it, okay? Um, and then moving down, all we do is combine all of that into a bowl. Then it says to use a funnel to get it into the ornament. I just used a piece of paper that I turned into a funnel. So you, if you don't have one, that's completely fine. But then what you can do with it, you know, adding some instructions when you serve it as a gift, is that this can be great as an olive oil dipping mix. 
So maybe um, you combine it with a bottle of our olive oil, like I'll get my olive oil in a minute and show you. But olive oil, you can mix it with sour cream or the dietitian friendly version of sour cream or mayonnaise would be to mix this with some Greek yogurt. Makes for a great dip um, for veggies, whatever it may be. But let me show you, let me get out my, uh, my olive oil here. Okay, so maybe you have, I'm going to try not to get into my, my boiling soup back here, but maybe you have some olive oil and then you just, you know, this is how you give it as a, hold on, let me see if I can push this back without it being too hot. There we go. All right, I'll turn it down. So see, put it on there, like maybe you gift a, a nice bottle of olive oil, add this on here. Super easy. Like, I think this could be a really great one for teachers. Um, and there you have it, right? Or, you know, maybe sometimes I'm one of those people where I'm like, oh, I have this gift, but I just want a little something extra, extra on there. Like, this could be one of those things that you, you know, maybe this is the name tag, right? Like, maybe you get those gift sticker name tags and you put that right on here and then you put this on to the gift, right? I see somebody else said using it on a wine bag, also a great idea. So this could just, like, as I mentioned, be that little extra something, something to add on to a gift that you already have. Okay. So um, lots of great and fun ideas here. This is the nutritional yeast that is mentioned in the recipe. This is our Nature's Promise brand. Um, it's, once again, another way to add a little bit of fiber, a little bit of protein. It has like a nutty, cheesy taste to it, okay? Um, it's used in a lot of recipes to help thicken um, ingredients. So good one there, okay? See, you guys are really chatting it up. I love it. I love it. Uh, let me bring this video back here. Okay, guys. So. That's what we've got. Like I said, I know that was a lot going on. I know we covered a lot. Um, I know that you guys are sharing um, ideas in chat, which I think is great. So I'm glad that you've done that too. I will send out, um, I'm going to, now that I'm thinking of it, stop the recording, but I'm going to 